Hello and welcome back here for game number three, where 100 Thieves will be facing off against Team Liquid. I'm Clayton, Captain Flowers Reigns, joined by my dude, Sam <laughs> Kobe Hartman Kinsler. Are you ready, my dude? Always ready. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and take a look at those starting rosters. Selecting the blue side, it is 100 Thieves with Fake God in the top lane, amazing in the jungle. Ryu at mid with Bang and Afro Moo bottom lane and support, and coaches Prolly and Joseph Jang. And facing them on the red side is Team Liquid. In the top lane, Impact. In the jungle, X Smithy. Mid lane, Jensen. Bottom lane, double lift, support core JJ, and coaches Kane and Dodo on stage. Now, despite a strong showing at Rift Rivals for NA, Team Liquid just appeared a bit off in their match yesterday versus Cloud9. That is very true. There was kind of a laundry list of mistakes that Team Liquid made, and they were very uncharacteristic of them. They were uncoordinated plays. They didn't track opponents well across the map. Uh, a lot of people left with their heads scratching. So maybe they're looking vulnerable here for 100 Thieves to take a shot. And as I see it, this is one of the better chances 100 Thieves will have at an upset, as Team Liquid are one of these teams that have a tendency to sort of ignore the rules of standings where the better teams at the top are supposed to beat the teams at the bottom because they drop teams against, drop games, excuse me, against lower ranked teams more often than other teams would. And for 100 Thieves to get through this, they'll need to course correct some of the aggression they've added to their game plan. Still looking for aggressive opportunities in their game yesterday, though it didn't uh, result in success versus TSM. So they do need to clean up some of those openings that they do leave for opponents as well. Uh, and Niski actually attributed Cloud9's win over Team Liquid to showing something new, the Vagar in the mid lane and kind of uh, mixing up the game plan. So maybe 100 Thieves will try a strategy like that to try and take down uh, Team Liquid, our back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back defending champions. And that seems to be one of the sort of umbrella lessons that has covered all of NA after Rift Rivals is we need bigger pools, man. We got to start ex expanding our swimming capabilities to go from one end to the other because there's just not enough different things being played. Let's all see. four pool parties. Let's see what kind of a pool party we're going to have here for the Thieves and Team Liquid as we get into the bands. Irelia Lux and Tom Kench band away as Team Liquid get rid of the Karma, the Sejuani, and the Yumi. Okay, so the Sona is left up for a possibility uh, for 100 Thieves. Bang, not even gonna look at it though, as he instantly locks in the Zaya. Definitely one of his most comfortable champions. Even had that cosplay at All Stars. Oh yeah. In the 1v1 versus Sneaky. He's also been looking so much more aggressive, you know, since Amazing joined the team. It really does seem like there's been a shift for 100 Thieves, and uh, a lot of the results have been Bang playing more aggressively on champions. Zai is one of those champions where the ultimate does allow you another kind of get out of jail free card. We'll see if 100 Thieves can pull out another win here today. Remember, they have won three out of their past four games. We're on a three game win streak before yesterday. So maybe they can pull that back into where they want it to be here against Team Liquid, who are going to lock in the Jarvan first and foremost. Grab a powerful jungler there for Xmithy. Five seconds left to make that second pick. We'll see if there's any more of these OPs they want to go for. What's the name of the game, Team Liquid? It is Ooh. the Tarek. All right. All right, the Sona is up, and they're taking the Tarek half of it first because they're not afraid of a Zaya Sona lane, which I think uh, there's a lot of legitimacy to that. Yeah. And they're just going to be able to take it in the next round. Gragas being hovered right now for 100 Thieves. Gragas Yasuo is a combination that is still left up and extremely effective, as we've seen, versus Sona lanes with anything, because you can go split second engages, you flash in with the Gragas, you get your knockup, or once you pass level six, you just ult him with the cask and it procs the Yasuo ultimate. Not gonna lock in the combo quite yet, but they will pick up the Gragas and leave uh, you know, an opening for it to get banned out in the second wave of bans. But of course, what you get for leaving the Yasuo behind right now is complementing that lover's synergy in the bottom lane with the Zaya and Rakan duo. We know how strong these two can be in lane. And the thing about Sona Tarek, which of course that Sona is being hovered right now by the side of Team Liquid, it does get smashed in lane. And this was one of the criticisms of North American teams when they picked it at Rift Rivals is 
you just get beaten so badly early on into the game, you don't get to scale into that point where you can five-man death ball down mid lane. So we'll see if Team Liquid can find what they're looking for here. And it's pretty funny because Doublelift has been very outspoken on Twitter about how much he doesn't like playing Sona uh, lane, Sona Tarek or Sona Tom Kench, but it keeps I think the getting was, please left... just nerf Sona into the ground. Yeah, it keeps getting left open for them, though, and Team Liquid keeps picking it at Rift Rivals and here in the LCS. Once again, we are going to have them. And whenever you have this lane uh, for people who have not been up to date in the last month or so of competitive League of Legends here in the LCS. The Sona Tarek brings that big mid game team fighting power. You want to group up so you can use those ultimates, the Tarek and vulnerability. Uh, Sona actually does scale really well once you get your Lich Bane for a lot of burst damage with an AP threat. So that means they're probably going to want some AD threats from their uh, solo lanes. So we may see Impact or Jensen. And pick one of those up, and we have one of them banned out already. 100 Thieves already trying to take away some of those options for AD solo laners in the game plank. That being said, although the mid game for the Sonoteric is powerful, you pretty much see them always calling in sick to laning phase and just hanging out underneath their turret instead. Not a whole lot of early pressure there usually from these lanes, unless the jungler decides to get involved and try to heavily swing things in their favor. The Twisted Fate, the Gangplank, the Kin, and all solo lane bands coming out here in the second phase. What else are you going to expect when junglers and bot laners are locked in for both sides? The Aatrox, the last one banned out here. All right, trying to take away two of the strongest top lane AD threats. And they will leave one of Impact's favorites. Oh, a Team baby. Liquid consistent pick here. Uh, he has dropped kills in lane as Jace and hasn't been the prolific lane bully uh, that we often associate with the champion, but has pushed down so many turrets for Team Liquid. They'll often use Impact on Jace to try and push on the side waves, but then collapse into a five on five. So uh, Jace can very effectively join up with the Sona Tarek lane and throw down those empowered shock blasts for poke. He doesn't have to go full commitment to the split push style. And 100 Thieves are deciding, all right, we don't want to go with something that is going to try to match the Jace in this 1v1 split. It's not going to be Garen Crowd. I'm sorry. I know you guys are getting excited, but Corky locked in instead. That'll be the mid laner for 100 Thieves. And they want Fake God on that Orn. They want him on something tanky, something that can lose gracefully enough to the Jace to still be a monster in the team. Yeah, and as we've seen previously, I think it was Darshan maybe that hit solo killed Impact in the Orn versus Jace matchup. Uh, previously in the LCS. So definitely do have to watch out for the all-in in the you know first seven minutes or so of the game, especially if the jungler does come. Jensen's answering with the classic Zoe here into Corky. Zoe into Corky, plenty of long range damage potential coming out from this Team Liquid squad between the Jace and the Zoe together. Once you engage on them, of course, they've got the ability to disengage with the power of the bottom laners, those two incredibly potent team fight ulties. On the side of 100 Thieves, though, you've got plenty of really good initiation for these guys. And that's what I really like seeing for teams that still feel like they're kind of finding the way into how they want to play the game, still sort of working on making those aggressive plays and being an active type of team. Give yourself a lot of buttons to say, all right, here's where we're doing what we're doing. Orn, Rakan, Gragas, all these guys can pull the trigger and say, we're fighting now. And those three, they're going to have to coordinate very well because if you misplace one of your CCs and you allow Sona to get off a heal, you allow the Tarek to get the invulnerability down, then you lose out on your opportunity with that crowd control. So a lot of the 100 Thieves lineup does depend on coordination here. And we shall see if the Team Liquid Sona Tarek with a lot of poke damage behind it can get to that mid game. If they group up, they throw out the poke, they throw down the heals, they will slowly wear you down and siege away your turrets. And speaking of mid game, we're in the mid game of the whole split now. We just recently crossed into the second round, Robin. We're halfway there. It's time for everybody to flip everything into the on position. We had five teams tied for first coming into today. It's still anybody's race. It's not like we have one team sitting at nine and zero and all the other teams sitting at zero and nine. It's not this super polarized standings. Anybody can make a run. Thieves already showed they've got the ability to find some wins. We'll see if they can pull out another one here in an upset against Team Liquid or if the reigning champs are going to get back into the form people expect them to be after that little bit of a slippery game yesterday. And even though Team Liquid did slip yesterday, still coming in as heavy favorites here. We'll see if there's any sort of early action. Already moving out to the bottom half of the jungle, whereas 100 Thieves moving to the top side here and might go for the delayed invade. 
I feel like we've been seeing more and more of those recently. Of the delayed invades, people deciding, all right, we're going to wait until that minion spawn notification is given and then move in before your opponents really have a chance to react and get back safely if they need to. But 100 Thieves will move in nice and early here. Impact seeing them there will back away. Not really too concerned about it. Fires off the shock glass, but won't find anybody to hit it with. Ward placed down by 100 Thieves in two different brushes, and they back themselves out. And we did have a counter invade here from Team Liquid. They lay down another ward. Uh, right on top of the defensive 100 Thieves Ward to see the Raptors. Amazing should know that it's there, and the rest of 100 Thieves should know that Team Liquid have this ward here, though. And early game wards drop tremendously in value if your opponent sees you place them. Just like that, 100 Thieves can move in, they kill off the ward, they get the extra experience and gold. It's only going to be for their bottom laners, though, so a little bit less of an effect. And Amazing will get the pull on red buff to try and speed up that Gragas early path. Yeah, I like seeing the adaptation a lot of teams are making these days with starting one person on the team with a sweeper as opposed to five trinkets, five warding trinkets all the time, just making sure that you can't get rid of some of that obnoxious early vision as Smithy already has his blue buff working on the Gromp here. You're going to see the Jarvan going for the full clear, working towards that top side where bottom lane will be keeping an eye on these guys as the early game plays through. Remember, we expect the Sona Tarek to sort of get smashed down here against the Zaya Rakan duo, but that'll be up to Bang and Aphromoo to really make sure it sinks. And we'll keep track of Amazing. There are so many options when you're a Gragas in a position like this with both these team comps because you can try and just farm up enough money for your boots and get an early recall to try and get your Predator off or go for the full clear. Bottom side, double lift splash is blown. That is where I would want to use my Predator oh, yeah. if I'm the Gragas. Sona, you can tell just by the sheer size of the little segments of her health bar how vulnerable and squishy this champion is. Sona is one of the, I think her and Yumi are probably the only two champions in the game. You can just look and see those giant health bar segments and they look oh so tempting to make that play and look for that easy pickup kill there. Top side Impact versus Fake God up here. You mentioned how Jace has sort of become a staple pick for Impact, and I couldn't agree more. This is what Team Liquid seems to like to put him on all too often. And Fake God as a player who 100 Thieves really doesn't seem to want to play around, I'm glad they've put him on something like an Ornn. Don't put the guy on something that needs to constantly have attention given to it. Put him on Ornn, allow him to play a supportive role, and win that one. Nick Smithy looking at a possible move on Ryu here. Maybe after he goes for that next minion. Pretty hard to do when he's got the Valkyrie ready to go, though. Ryu can easily just slide his way out of that one. Smithy won't really find much success there, but hey, at least he makes his presence known and he'll move towards the bottom side scuttle grab. Yeah, I mean, giving up your uh, location here does allow Amazing the free choice of if he tries to go for a play on top side Jace. He knows Smithy has to be on the bottom side of the map because he exited the mid lane to that area. It should also signal to Bang and Aphromoo. All right. Possible Jarvan gank. They need to play a little bit less aggressively into the Sona Tarek and give a little bit more caution. Amazing also about a couple camps up here ahead of Xsmithy as he did manage to clear more of his jungle out while Xsmithy tried to make the pass through the mid lane. And now Amazing will step up and try to contest Xsmithy at the entrance to his jungle with both junglers nearby. Ryu is taking the opportunity to trade aggressively here with Jensen. And because Amazing shows, Xsmithy has to follow for the possible dive they were going to pull off there. Uh, delays his clear of the camp a little bit further. Amazing was able to get the full clear plus Scuttle Crab. So if he just drops off a ward here and then gets his recall off, I think that'll be the plan. At least circumventing this Scuttle Crab by going over the blue buff wall, he wants to punish the flashless double lift. Sona, as you said, very juicy target and Sona without flash. Yeah. Here we go. Bang and Aphromoo trying to start this one off. Aphromoo initiating their stuns. Not going to find their mark to disengage here for the side of Team Liquid. Amazing going in, looking to find the move, but that's not it. Flash spent there by 100 Thieves on their jungler, and Team Liquid does not fall. Yeah, the minions are right there. So you either have to pre-charge your body slam away from the minions and then try and flash directly on to double lift. Um, but he flashes in early. I think he's just trying to get the slow from his Q and then try and follow that one up. But with that minion wave, they aren't able to get a body slam to land from Amazing. No kill. And the flash was spent by both Bang and Aphromoo here. All in all, very, very big defensive play there from Team Liquid. They get an advantage of three flashes off yep. 100 Thieves. And all they spend is Core JJ's heal. That's a trade you would take any day of the week for the side of TL. And this is sort of what we talked about at the beginning of the game, saying, yeah, it's good to see 100 Thieves 
trying to make these plays happen. This was a team for a while at the beginning of the split where fans were really frustrated just saying, what is 100 Thieves trying to do? They don't actually decide to make anything happen. They don't make any plays. And now they're trying to make them, but sometimes they just get a little too happy there with that pedal to the metal. Yes, I mean, step one is the game plan and setting up the play. Step two is executing the play effectively and actually getting the kill because they're going to want those flashes back. Let's see if Team Liquid can punish them. One of the biggest lessons in League of Legends is trying to punish offensively blown flashes as much as defensively blown ones. Yeah. Uh, definitely is going to be a hot spot here in the bottom lane now. Smithy's going to be seen by this control war, though, so Bang and Afro move should be able to disengage. Try to contest him knocking this thing down here. Nice cancel. On the EQ there, coming out from the Jarvan. Afro making sure he takes out about two thirds of Smithy's HP, while top side. Fake God going aggressive here onto Impact as Amazing works his way up into the top side. There goes the Orn Horn. Flash away from Impact to stay alive. Oh, yeah, he definitely had to flash that one. If that lands, then the Predator from Amazing allows him to close that gap and they get the full combo off. Bottom side, bottom side. It's Afro Moo and Bang. We're going to put the hurt on Double Lift. And first blood goes over to Afro Moo. Core JJ on the run. He'll survive. But that's still a 1-0 for the yeah. Thieves. How many times have we seen Team Liquid pick up the Sonoteric again and give up the first blood? This one's going to be no exception. Bang and Aphromoo. The tip there of Aphromoo's W does just catch double lift. He throws down the Ignite and they get the kill. Bang and Aphromoo have been playing so much more aggressively and effectively in the bottom lane here in the second half of summer. It has really just changed the entire look of this 100 Thieves lineup. Shortly before that, they had just chased off Xmithy in the jungle, uh, dealing a significant amount of damage as well. So definitely a lot of threat down there. Meanwhile, Impact take a chunk out of Fake God. Yeah, but he'll get chunked back a little bit as Fake God uses the point blank headbutt against the wall to get a bit of an extended trade there when Impact doesn't have much left to trade with. Mid lane Jensen's gonna be handed the blue buff. Pretty even farm between the two mid laners here so far. Biggest CS discrepancy on the map is that top side where Impact is doing what you would expect Jace to do, getting that lane advantage. It's not a whole lot of interference from either jungler, except from that previous gank from Amazing that forced the flash away from Impact. There's not really anything much to be mentioned. Fake God with the Summoner Spellbook has Ignite currently, so if Amazing goes back up towards the top side to try to punish, we might see something there. But now, he will be looking at bottom lane before the ultis come online for Doublelift and Core JJ. Yeah, no ultis. Doublelift does have flash, though. Let's see if he uses it. There goes the cask. Flash used there to make sure he stays alive. But hey, this is pretty much 100% downtime on double his flash this game. Yeah, and it's going to be a turret play picked up. Core JJ. Up in the air he goes. No ulties available. Remember that one. Bang looking to grab the kill. One more auto attack will do it. And Team Liquid loses their support. We'll see if they can find a counter attack here with Xmithy. Nice multiple man knock up into the three man cataclysm. Xmithy's going to be stuck there in that pit. Has to flash away, keeping himself alive. Double if now trying to get That's back beneath the tier one turret. Aphromoo taken very low, and it's a double kill for double lift. There's the crescendo. There's the sleepy trouble, and there's the triple oh. for double. Oh my goodness. Double lift gets all three, and it is suddenly a fed Sona in the bottom lane. <laughs> Impact seeing everybody down bottom two knows that he's got free reign on top side. That CS lead you're talking about is going to get a bit worse. Let's take a closer look at this one. Amazing's going to pop over the wall here, and they initially get double as flash. We know uh, the beginning here, but then they go all in on Core JJ as he actually doesn't respect the Aphromoo engage. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think he has flash at this moment too, so he doesn't flash the engage. If you don't flash, uh, the knock up into charm, then he's gonna die anyways. It's the exit uh -oh. that was the exit part was the interesting part. It gets cut off, uh, and we're Unlucky. back to live. All right, we're back to live where Impact finds himself on the receiving end of a gank from Amazing. Fake God barely surviving there, having to spend some summoner spells. That ignite I mentioned earlier did come in very useful to make that one happen. As Jensen gets caught out a little bit here. Turns some damage onto Ryu, but that Corky knows he can bounce forward right now. Find Ooh. plenty of damage onto the Team Liquid mid laner. Yeah, dishing it out. Top side, as you were talking about, the flash from Impact had been used, so Fake God with his Summoner Spellbook was able to take him down with a short visit from Amazing. And 100 Thieves just continually. This proactive look is just so much better for them. Look at the bottom of the screen. Jensen had roamed up to, doesn't hit that Paddle Star, and that means Fake God lives. It was very close there as both tanks right in the middle, but not able to get it. And that means 100 Thieves get the unanswered kill. 
And bottom side, all the work that we were talking about, 100 Thieves doing the success of Bang and Afro move, finding that first blood in the 2v2, being able to outplay the gank from Xmitty and stop him when he went for the control ward. It's all been circumvented by the previous mistake that gave Doublelift the triple kill. Doublelift is now the wealthiest person in the bottom lane, period. And that is trouble, as now 100 Thieves are looking to make the play here yet again. Cosmic Radiance coming down. Doublelift kept alive. Bang, gonna be drawing the aggro from the turret. Doublelift now healing himself up. We're gonna keep alive just a moment longer. Ryu has to retreat, and Bang's able to find a shutdown. Goes with the ulti, looking to find the outplay. Ono Smithy won't be able to do it. It is a one. For one. It's a battlefield down here in the bottom lane, Flowers. They dive it again, and it's another one for one trade. The results are also wearing very thin on this tower. That thing is about to go down on the bottom side. So let's we'll see if they can actually return and knock it down to take away some of that safety. But here's the second attempt. Four members once again. Amazing flashes in. They can't 100% to zero double lift in the CC before immunity comes down because Ryu wasn't there initially. They didn't have the extra damage from Corky, so then things get messy. Bang has to flash in to finish up that kill. That seals his death as Xmithy had come down for the counter. And of course, the entire time the game is focusing on bottom lane with four members from each team down there, Top continues to favor impact while it's left alone on this island. Jace is the king of the island of top lane. Unless somebody gets involved up there, he's generally going to have a laning phase he enjoys as Amazing will move towards this top part of the river here, waiting for that Scuttle Crab to spawn. Should be able to clear that out on spawn rather easily. And Doublelift has a fully completed support item, Eye of Frost here, with the three wards already because of so much early action. All the kills going to him. He's trying to fight off the 100 Thieves bottom lane and secure the objective for Team Liquid, which they do. Meanwhile, Amazing saying, all right, bottom side, it's Team Liquid's Earth Drake, so let's see if we can get Shelly here for the side of 100 Thieves. Clearing that out on top of the Rift Scuttle speed buff. Impact makes his way down the river, wants to try to see if he can finish Amazing off. Big Shock Blast. Shelly down to 2,000 HP. Amazing wants to hang around long enough to make sure they secure this one with the Smite. Big Smitty moving up to see if maybe it's contestable. <laughs> All right, 100 Thieves got it. All these solo laners trying to fight off the enemy junglers there. <laughs> Ryu's able to throw down enough cover fire to ward Xmithy away from the objective, and 100 Thieves do secure it in the end. The bottom side left unattended, and Doublelift gets his first plate. Yeah, Doublelift grabbing some plate money there. Team Liquid, despite the fact that the kills are even here, are up 1,500 gold compared to their opponents. You can see that by the CS advantage they've bought for themselves in the top lane, in the jungle, honestly, all the way across the map except that bottom side. Yeah, whenever the Sona gets early kills like that off a dive, it's insane. It's like an exponential growth for your gold income because you immediately get to upgrade your support item. He can then farm much earlier uh, because he can throw down the wards. It'll also be safer, so they'll have more vision earlier. Definitely going to be a bit more difficult, but 100 Thieves oh sticking boy. to the game plan over a bunch of wards. There are three wards leading up to this path because 100 Thieves have taken it so many times. Team Liquid know that this is the roadmap. Vision minefield from the side of Team Liquid as the turret does fall in the bottom lane there. 100 Thieves making sure they get the plate money off of that one. Unfortunately, they will not be able to use Shelly for two free plates as the plates have just now expired. We'll see where they do decide to go ahead and drop that one as the game moves forward. Remember, it is Ryu. Normally you see those on the jungler, but this time around it's the 100 Thieves mid laner that has it picked up. Corky also with the package, ready to make a delivery if he can, but oftentimes early on in the game, we see these packages sort of just get wasted. All right, Double F fills up more wards back out onto the Rift here. Bunch of control wards for Team Liquid as well. Their bottom tower is gone, but they can group up and try and make a push here. Looks like they're gonna push out the mid wave and then sweep into the river to get a little bit more control. 14 and a half minutes into the game. And Xmithy looking around for the Scuttle Crab, but a package is gonna ward him off, and Ryu will try and claim the gold by himself. Unfortunately, he didn't touch the Scuttle, so he didn't take off the armor and magic resist himself, so Aphromoo will come in and help him finish it. Aphromoo making sure that he tanks up that Shock Blast there, so Impact's not able to steal away the Scuttle Crab, and... Everybody sort of just goes back to what they were doing. 100 Thieves does have three members here in the top side. Rift Herald available to drop. That one is over halfway expired on the timer, so they will have to use it here in the next two minutes. Yep, they want to keep up the pressure on these turrets. Right now, Impact and Nick Smithy waiting for the play. 100 Thieves just wanted to commit to the turret. It's not like they're going here to have a dive on Impact just yet. Nick Smithy showing up. 
Double lift and core JJ. Four man collapse from TL, but 100 thieves do not overcommit and they won't be caught. Meanwhile, because Team Liquid has too many bodies in the top side, Ryu says, all right, it's time to go for this one. Shelly summon up here in the mid lane. Should get that charge off, no problem. Won't wipe enough damage, though, and Team Liquid should still be able to hold on to the tier one. Yeah, Team Liquid running around the map trying to put out fires right now, defending each point. They do lose a tremendous amount of health on both of these turrets. Top is gonna go down as Afro Moon Amazing move into the jungle. All they have to do now is make the rotation. Jensen, though, goes for the 1v1. Jensen finding himself a bottom lane turret. Fake God trying to find an outplay. Gets the knock up into the air. To the oh! and Jensen will barely walk away. So close. I know so many people at home hate Zoe as a champion. We're kind of... <laughs> Kind of hoping for that one, but it does not quite complete. Jensen walks out of it. Everything's fine as he chugs on his potion right there. Corrupting potion will keep him alive as he backs off on the Zoe. But Fake God shows that he's got some bite left in him as well. Fights back a little bit. In the end, Team Liquid get the objective though. So it is the turret down now and answered one for two for Team Liquid. 100 Thieves doing a good job keeping this game close in the first 16 and a half minutes of play. Still down about that one and a half thousand gold that I mentioned earlier, but it's not like Team Liquid is starting to run away with things. Thieves making sure that this stays a relatively even amount of ground for them to fight on. You can see items coming online across the boards here for both teams. Black Cleaver and Sunfire Cape done there for the top laners. Corky still working on that Trinity Force there in mid lane. Wanted to opt into the Mercury Treads completed first before going for that Trinity all the way done. Wanted to make sure that he was able to get out of some of the CC here a little bit faster. You can see Doublelift working on that Lich Bane you were talking about as well. Yeah, Lich Bane about to be operational. And as you can see on the minimap, they pre-ward this area all right here with a bunch of Team Liquid wards setting up for the Dragon. That allows them to all retreat into the Dragon Pit, finish up that objective without any possible answer from 100 Thieves and giving nothing in return. Now, as Tier 1 turrets have fallen, we're starting to see more rotations around the map. What I'm looking at here is the game reaching the point where Sona and Tarek are feeling really good. And what I'm subsequently looking at is 100 Thieves to not play an NA RAM game because that's where Sona and Tarek shine. I say Sona's feeling pretty good as soon as he gets a triple kill about five minutes into the game. All right, all right, I'll, I'll concede <laughs> you that one. I'll concede you that one. That feels pretty good for just about anybody. Look at that gold total, actually. Double lift is the richest person on Team Liquid as the Sona lane from bottom side, but that might change if they're able to get another kill. Fake God is gonna just dash his way out. Fake God doing a good job drawing aggro down there and staying alive. Does cost him his flash. But mid lane, we'll see how much pressure can be applied by 100 Thieves. Ryu also setting up shop here in the top side on that Corky. Trinity Force now complete means those Spellblade procs will make it pretty easy to do damage to these structures, but Impact is coming to collapse. Looking for the 1v1. He's already able to take him down halfway. Ryu's running back to the help of Amazing. And Impact knows not to chase it any further. Double lift in the mid lane here with X Smithy and 4JJ, seeing if maybe they can make some sort of a fight happen. Fake God TPing into this one. No flash available. Remember, Ooh. he used it, but he swapped it out for the Summoner Spellbook to the exhaust. Topside Impact not going to find anything there either. Amazing back and away from the enemy jungle as everything sort of dissipates at once. Yeah, 100 Thieves were trying to steal away the red buff, but Impact got the last hit. Oh, oh crescendo! Nice! Chain CC coming out from Team Liquid. 100 Thieves already going to lose their 80. Carry their jungler's going to follow up there. Double goes on a killing spree against Amazing. As Team Liquid have already found two, they'll look for even more. Fake God gets stunned. Not enough damage to bring him down immediately. And TL will push under the mid lane T1. The Team Liquid bottom lane double flashes there to follow up. Double lift goes in first, gets the two person ultimate, and then Core JJ flashing afterwards with the Taric stun, lines it up right off of the stun targets to chain their crowd control, win them the team fight, and win them the mid lane. That's what you want to see out of Team Liquid. Let's take another look. Here's the coordination. Jensen comes in from the bottom side, gets them the group up. That is a perfect target for Double Lift to stun them. And then on the stun targets, it's an easy lineup there for Core JJ. Lands the Taric stun and immediately calling down the Taric ultimate, lets them get off the tower dive. And even though they have to walk back over the Corky package, the work has been done. With two members already down on the side of 100 Thieves, they cannot answer. And those kills, plus the follow-up structure, earns Team Liquid an almost 4,000 gold lead here at 20 minutes. Nothing to scoff at, and Thieves are really working an uphill battle now. Well, they've got some extra speed to run uphill. I like the Shirelias from Amazing. This is okay. an item 
that is rarely seen, but does have good stats and does have a good active as well. You can speed up uh, the squad. It's cooldown reduction, health, AP, all things that Gragas does like. And it kind of just backs up the play style that we've seen when he's on the team. Nice knockback coming out there. They're able to find double if That's the chain CC coming through. Double is still going to be kept alive. Only for oh. Robin here. He is going to walk away. And now the counter attack coming out from Team Liquid. And Smithy able to find a dunk on a fake goblet immediately walking away. Now, Team Liquid seeing that maybe there's something to be found. But Dibble is going to die here on the back end of the fight. Ryu is able to find the flank. And Team Liquid has found disaster. Core JJ's cut to pieces. A double kill over to Ryu. Will it be three? One more auto attack will not be there, but that is a one for three and hundred thieves finds their fight. Oh, and that was such an important kill on the exit there, taking down the jungler, but 100 Thieves will just run up the mid lane with it after they route Team Liquid. Two towers will be the reward off of that team fight. 100 Thieves getting right back into this one. What a bite back from 100 Thieves. Let's take another look. All right, amazing. Pops the Predator on the outside. Nice ultimate onto Double Lift. And Aphromo is able to chain the CC, but they don't have the damage because Double Lift got his ult off on Bang. So Bang was CC'd while Double Lift was CC'd, and they weren't able to finish the kill on Sona until the rest of the party joins. Ryu is able to get in on Corky. They burst down the Sona. Big ultimate from Fake God splits the team fight with that Orn ulti and forces them out the back side of the map. Importantly for Team Liquid, they did kill Amazing, so there was no jungler for 100 Thieves to switch to Baron with, and they just got two turrets instead. I think they'll be very happy with those two turrets, though. But I think if you're a 100 Thieves fan, that's the kind of play right there that gives you hope. 100 Thieves had just lost a pretty big fight to Team Liquid, where they lost about a 2,500 gold comparison to their opponents. Then they immediately strike back. We'll Whoops. see if Team Liquid can find themselves something here now. Is Amazing going to be chunked down below half HP? Right as the Earth Drake spawns, Team Liquid happy to see that. Four men strong here in the bottom side of the river. Will be able to take this Drake down. Doesn't look like Thieves are going to contest it. Yeah, that was a super dangerous spot for Amazing to be in. He does get his ult off to allow him to survive, but they give up the objective as Team Liquid grouping bursts it down quite easily. Now here comes the siege we were talking about in Champ Select. We're going over these two compositions. This is the point in the game where we're looking at the Team Liquid squad. Grouping up with the Sona Tarek, they have Jace and Zoe Poke. This is one of the most annoying five champion groupings that you can have. And because of that, Team or 100 Thieves do have to back off the Dragon. We'll see if they can create another surprise play. That is their route through this game. They have to have control wards and they have to make use of this speed. Amazing with Predator, with the Shirelias, on Gragas. Needs to be able to create that play and then chain CC to find the kills like they just did in the mid lane. And I like how Ryu's staying in the side lanes here as well. I already said I don't want to see the death ball five-man mid from 100 Thieves. You're just not going to beat Team Liquid's composition with it. Instead, they're trying to keep Ryu in those side lanes, make something happen. Of course, as time goes on, he will need to be able to deal with Impact over there in that split push game. Impact with Cleaver already completed. Has the Last Whisper in inventory. Ghost Blade also just now put together as he goes back to the shop. That Jace is pretty scared. All right. 100 Thieves, see if they can pull off the quick kill or use the Gragas ultimate for disengage during Tarek ultimate. It's going to be a very, very tight timing here. Execution will be key. Dick Smithy with the Gargoyle Stone play plus the Cinder Hulk completed on your Jarvan means that he will be very tanky once he initiates. Team Liquid will be very comfortable just throwing him into the middle, allowing him to buy time for the rest of the squad and for the Cosmic Radiance. Team Liquid with control over the Baron area, though, now moving up, sweeping this out, and that's what they want to have done right now. They want to make 100 Thieves wonder, are they actually doing it? Do we have to check this right now? And Team Liquid will go straight for the objective. All right, they don't have any sort of drawback to starting the Baron because they can spam heals from Tarek and Sona. 100 Thieves know this, poking around, they do get them off it. Very important here to delay. And now it's about making that critical play. Team Liquid with the vision advantage. Trying to throw out some poke. Bang also took some damage here before the fight actually started off. Smithy going in, trying to initiate. Fake God's able to find a knock up onto two. Smithy getting himself away. Gragas Cask not going to find anyone, but with Core JJ's ultimate down, Team Liquid have lost a significant chunk of their team fighting power. Yeah, huge play right there for 100 Thieves. Um, amazing with the ultimate on Gragas. Forces X Smithy to flash, even though he already had the invulnerability. 
on him, the knockback would have secured his death by positioning him in the rest of 100 Thieves lineup. Now without the ultimates, let's see if they can do it. 100 Thieves trying to push out mid, but double lift teleports back. 100 Thieves, one third HP on their mid laner. Ignite is dropped onto him. That was the real Zoe summoner spell, not something he picked up. TL though, as you already said, there's so many spammable heals on this team. When they're hurt, they're never really hurt, and they can go right back into the Baron. Thing. Yep, they're spamming healing on it. Teleport comes back in from Ryu as well. 100 Thieves looking to counter this Baron. 100 Thieves don't want to let Team Liquid get away with this. Cosmic Radiance still not available here just yet. Half the cooldown still remains on it, but Double is still going to be spamming those heals. 100 Thieves backing away. 4JJ on the front lines here for TL. Cosmic Radiance or not, we'll be eating a couple rockets there from Ryu. Keep your eyes on Double Lift. He has been looking for Bang. Flash is ready for the Sona, looking for a big Flash ultimate. Bang had to use his ultimate in the last fight. It's coming up very quickly, though. And if Team Luka can't get the engage there, then Bang will have another safety net for the five on five. And Bang is so important in this game. Remember, when you play the Sona Taric, you sort of forfeit the consistent range damage that an AD carry always brings to a team fight. Why they've been a staple in League of Legends for eight years. And Bang's the one who will be able to scale up and just become that massive threat as time goes on. Currently sitting on Essence Reaver and Infinity Edge. Means those auto attacks are going to sting, but not quite at that three item sweet spot that crit marksmen always go for and we always put so much emphasis on. Elemental Drake number four and Infernal spawning here in 35 seconds. First Infernal of the game. With the amount of damage on both these compositions, you've got to think that both sides are going to want to fight for it, especially considering how close the game still is. I've touched on it a couple of times, but I keep going back because it just stays within arm's reach for both sides. Bang is sitting on a ton of money right now. He can go back and get a full zeal item, I think. 2.3k in inventory. He does get the rapid fire cannon. This is really big for 100 Thieves. He finished up that wolf camp just before the dragon spawns. Now 100 of these will have the item, despite the small gold difference here. They're the ones looking for the offensive play. And speaking of items, I want to go ahead and mention Fake God, now level 14 on the Orn. We're going to start seeing Orn items come through, but we're also going to see the initiation here. Fake God CC'd in a way that prevents him from using the second half of the ultimate. Good use of CC there from Team Liquid. Big team fight ulti down for 100 Thieves. Team Liquid now, because of the Orn ultimate being down, have control of mid lane. They're sending Impact down to solo this Infernal Drake while the rest of the team retains vision control of Baron. They don't want to let anyone from 100 Thieves actually slip in there. Amazing heads down with the Predator, knowing that this is the next objective. Both sides starting to commit more heavily towards this Infernal Drake. Ryu is in the top part of the map, though, and has no teleport. Amazing can try to steal this away. He will not be able to do so. Xmithy with a smite secure, make sure it goes the way of TL. And Ryu will just keep pushing. I like the split here from 100 Thieves. They can't answer the grouping of Team Liquid while the Orn ult is down. So Fake God has to go back down bottom side, try and push out that minion wave, and wait on the cooldown. Team Liquid up four dragons now with the secure of the Infernal Drake. Molten Edge upgraded for Bang. That level two Infinity Edge, thanks to the Orn passive, means that that Zaya is gonna be even stronger than you would normally expect from a three item Zaya. We'll see how he continues to upgrade his teammates' items as the game moves forward. I would expect either a Molten Edge or the upgraded Trinity Force for Ryu coming out next. Make sure those carries are top of the DPS charts. Yep, the burst damage is gonna be the big thing here for 100 Thieves. If they can get crits from Ryu and Bang, then it will be difficult for even a Sona Taric to heal that. And then it's going to become about the timing of their invulnerability with Taric Ultimate coming down. 100 Thieves have fought their way into such a good position in this game. Considering how the last couple splits have gone, with Team Liquid dominating the LCS and 100 Thieves trying to play catch up, this is a much more competitive match than people would have expected. Team Liquid still maintaining control over the Baron pit, though. You can see 100 Thieves have a ward sneakily on the side of the pit. Amazing pop on the Shirelia's Reverie, seeing if maybe there's an angle they can find to initiate here, but Team Liquid disengage in time. Not gonna give 100 Thieves that window. Thieves with priority over the mid lane, continuing to push up. 4JJ there on the front line. Barrel's gonna fly out, find a little bit of damage onto the Team Liquid health bars, but nothing that can't be healed off by Sona and Taric. Xmithy over the wall. Not gonna find anything he's looking for. Aphromoo goes to sleep, but Fake Dog does a good job blocking that up. And nobody actually gets engaged on just yet. 
Fighting over the wards around Baron. Once again, Team Liquid go mid. Smithy going in, forcing the ulti out of Bang, but here comes Fake God, able to find the counterattack. A lot of damage here over the front line. Core JJ gonna be exploded. Cosmic Radiance can never even be summoned, but Bang's down very low now as well. Impact forced to flash away. Amazing there on that front line, providing the CC. 100 Thieves falling back. Ryu's gonna be hit there by the Sona. Bang no longer a part of the fight, having to heal up off of the Raptors, but the healing is not gonna do much. He doesn't have much lifesteal, and that means the Thieves want to disengage. Team Liquid, although they lost their support, they're still feeling comfortable enough to stay out on the map. Yeah, dangerous trade right there, though. Core JJ does not ult early with Tarek. He gets killed, teleport from 100 Thieves, and oh, going for it! Nice denial coming out from Doublelift, freezing out from him in his tracks, but now Doublelift is cut down! Ryu goes on a killing spree. Aframu cannot quite find the catch up onto Impact. Derek Smithy also gonna disengage, but with the enemy bot laner down, Baron is the call. Counter to Sona, big crits, Captain Flowers. Oh, baby. Molten Edge comes through, Ryu's right there as well. They both take down the Sona. Now they're looking to take down Baron. There is a ward in the back, giving vision to Team Liquid. And whenever it's Smithy's on the map, you have to worry about your smite. You gotta respect this guy so much. He's smite stolen so much in his career, but Bang's able to secure it. Cosmic Radiance coming down. It will be able to keep Smithy alive for only a moment longer. An ice cast coming out from Amazing. 100 Thieves are able to find one. Can they make it too? Core JJ on the run, but the Thieves on the chase, and they've got the Baron. 100 Thieves are gonna be wearing purple now. 32 minutes into the game, they will look to march on Team Liquid. Double if does get the counter there onto his old lane partner, Aframu, stops him in his tracks, but his new lane partner, Bang, flashes forward, gets the kill, and with that, they can force the Baron. Team Liquid do threaten with X Smithy, but he doesn't get in there. I have to say, that is some confidence from 100 Thieves to go for that yes. Baron, uh, go for the 50-50 regardless. They are able to burst it down before X Smithy gets in, and that means everything looks great. 100 Thieves primed up with Baron on everybody on the squad. They're ahead in gold. They've been close so frequently this game. Now they're finally in the driver's seat, if by only a little bit, and we want to see what they can do. Go back to what we were talking about at the start of this game. They've been playing aggressively, they've been looking for moves, and now's when it really matters to not make those over-aggressive mistakes and put yourself in a spot where you can throw away this lead. You gotta look from Team Liquid's perspective. They are trying to fight off an army right now. Timing is critical. Double if no flash. It's gonna have to be a reactive Sona ultimate from the back. Hundred, actually amazing, I have to run for his life with the Sorelias, he's gonna yep. walk it out. Sorelias plus Predator will do it. Getting amazing away from that one. Team Liquid try to engage there with the Sona speed. Normally enough to chase after anybody, but the Gragas is able to shuffle out. Let's see what 100 Thieves wanna continue doing here. Plenty of heal spam for the side of Team Liquid to continue clearing out these waves. Top lane inhibitor turret down to half. One of the critical ultimates for 100 Thieves is not there. Amazing's Gragas ultimate. That means Core JJ can ult early with Tarek without having to worry about the Gragas ult delaying and knocking people back. So what Team Liquid definitely need to try and coordinate around an early cast from the Tarek to make a win in the team fight. If they can do that and force the engage with Jarvan and Sona, then they could fight them off. But 100 Thieves keep up the pressure. This Baron buff taking its toll. As you can see on the bottom half of the map, Fake God is getting those minions up to the turret. In answer here is Impact, but the rotation should be there. Gragas ultimate almost back available here for Amazing. Does have 30% CDR on the Gragas, means he can get that back up in about 70 seconds. It'll be even lower once he gets to level 16. But now the fight's popping off. Team Liquid deciding this is the time to go. But off to the side, it's gonna be Devil in some trouble. Both bottom laners gonna be shut down now. But Ryu is still able to find the damage. They are going to lose both bottom laners on the side of 100 Thieves. It is a two for two, and both sides back away. Ooh, that is gonna put a stop to the push, a stop to the Baron here. And 100 Thieves will just pick up the Constellation Pies of the Dragon. Very big coordinated play. We are looking at that Taric ultimate and trying to use it effectively in an offensive manner. Team Liquid do get it. They can force the engage, but Double if was not with the rest of the team. Sona being separated is not in the game plan for this composition. You can see right now, he heads down this jungle pathway. Nick Smithy does get the engage there that they're looking for, and Double if going in for the ultimate ensures that he dies, but also ensures that Bang dies. So 
it is a one for the one in the end. Him taking that route and ensuring that he gets his Sona ultimate off on Bang. Definitely one of the critical members that Team Liquid wanted to kill. And it is such a close one. And the, my eyes are immediately drawn to the leftmost inventory slot on both 100 Thieves carries. Stopwatch. Stopwatch. They're realizing how all these fights are just decided in a split second. And considering neither of them have had to use the item yet, they now both have this incredibly powerful team fight tool ready to go for the next big fight that honestly could determine the game at 35 minutes. Two stopwatches, two QSSs for themselves. On the side of Team Liquid, Core JJ has a stopwatch and X Smithy has a stopwatch. So the two divers, the front lines, do have possible recourse if the fight goes bad. Gonna be about the setup once again, Flowers. Baron is on the map in a minute and a half. So 100 Thieves trying to lay the groundwork here, clearing out the vision behind the objective. And not just Baron. Here in under four minutes, the Elder Drake will also be showing up. We've got to the point of the game. I feel like we don't get here too often anymore these days. League of Legends ends a little bit quicker than it used to, but 36 minutes in means Elder Drake will be a very scary buff if it falls into the hands of Team Liquid and it sort of creates this lopsided importance that the two teams have to place on it, it won't be nearly as good for the Thieves, but they have to keep it out of TL. All right, Team Liquid need to group up for their defense. They're trying to get their own control wards throughout their side of the jungle. This is very important, as you can see on the map right now. They do have it fairly well lit up. It is a constant battle in this quadrant of the jungle, trying to get a safe area for them to contest this Baron from 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves, control over the game for now. 1,000 gold in the lead, but remember it is Team Liquid, the back-to-back-to-back -back -back champs of the LCS. Not a team you can sleep on, not a team that 1,000 gold at 37 minutes will be a comfortable lead against. All it takes is one team fight, honestly, from either side. Team Liquid have all of the dragons, except for the single mountain. And this single mountain might be the one to burn it down, but they have supreme confidence in their late game team fighting. This is the moment where you have to bring it out if you want to defend your titles. And this is the moment on the other side for 100 Thieves where you can really prove that you're a contender. If you can make the calls that win you a game from here in this very even game state, it means a lot. Amazing's taken down to 20% HP as Baron is alive. That's going to be a very dangerous one. Gragas does have a lot of options for regeneration, though. He can just continue to spam abilities here, proccing the passive, healing right back up. He'll stay safe, but Team Liquid has already decided they're going to be starting up the Baron. They are demanding 100 Thieves' attention. Baron at half HP. Team Liquid ready to disengage and start the counterattack if the Thieves show up. Ornhorn gets down and it's found its way onto multiple people. Two knockups, but Team Liquid gets themselves far enough away with the Sona speed that the 100 Thieves are not able to engage. Ryu will try to poke on his way out. Team Liquid still looking for the opportunity to launch their own initiation now. Ryu's gonna be jumped on, in some trouble, has to flash away from the Cataclysm. Stun coming out from the Taric, not gonna find the mark on that one. No Cosmic Radiance gonna be summoned up yet. Fake God on the front line, loses a quarter of the HP, but not too worried about it. No Warmogs yet, so remember that will not immediately regenerate. But Team Liquid right back into the Baron pit they go. They know they put damage onto the 100 Thieves health bars. They know this is their shot to go after the Baron, and 100 Thieves are missing some ulties. Team Liquid now backing away here yet again. 100 Thieves just trying to put all their effort into buying time here. Ryu will continue shoving up the mid lane. Baron under half HP. The Thieves continuing to try to defend. Ryu has package. He's already up at the inhibitor turret as well. He's chunking it down. Nick Smithy looking for the engage, but 100 Thieves have won the tug of war. 100 Thieves trying to get oh, everybody bang. back over to Ryu, but Bang's gonna be in some trouble. Has to go up into the LT, immediately gonna be backing away furthermore now. Rag is put to sleep. Amazing gonna be taken low, but here comes your counterattack. 100 Thieves looking to start the fight. Cosmic Radiant's gonna be keeping everybody alive. Fake up there on the front line. Gonna be bursted down by the Team Liquid back line. Get some of the wall. It's gonna be the fake god down. One for zero, 100 Thieves will take the inhibitor turret, but lose the fight. Oh, what an insane package there from Ryu. Completely countering the first attempt from Team Liquid, but they redouble their efforts. They oh, we're not on. done yet. Here goes Amazing. There goes Amazing. There goes Team Liquid. And 100 Thieves are in some trouble. Jensen's got oh. to kill on the Afro move, but Ryu shuts down Impact. Now he's having to get his
himself away as Core JJ continues the chase. Ryu will fend them off, but that's gonna be bodies down on both sides. Oh my goodness! This living on the edge of a knife right now. What an intense game. The re-engage goes completely awry there for Amazing as Team Liquid finish him off, but then they get one back for themselves. Let's take another look at it. He goes all in, flashes onto double lift, but then expects a flash maybe? Maybe that was an over prediction, uh, but just throws it way over his head. That gives Team Liquid the confidence to go for, and they actually lose impact as he charges a bit deep into the 100 Thieves lineup. Core JJ then almost able to hit that stun. Not quite yet. Oh. That's a big, uh, the late game plays like that where it goes over the head. He's happy to get another chance at it though, because right. they're still in this game. Both squads here, the gold basically even right now, 41 minutes, there's not gonna be a big difference. With the big differences, the orn scaling. With all these orn upgraded items, it allows you to get more power in inventory uh, when the extra gold starts to be kind of frivolous on the other side. Elder Dragon is started up by Team Liquid. Here we go, TL again, not willing to sit on their hands and wait for 100 Thieves to make the calls. It's TL going after the buff. Remember, this one is so huge if they're able to get it. Fake God starting things off, looking to find the knockup. Xfinity coming back out right in the fight. Afro who's gonna be taken down very low. Fake God almost dead, now gonna be bursted out. Jensen goes on a killing spree and TL is still looking pretty good. Afro who in the middle of multiple people, he's gonna be taken down by impact. Team Liquid are slamming 100 Thieves into the ground. Ryu's on the retreat, but he's got nothing else to do. The heels are gonna come out, and the Elder Dragon goes down. Team Liquid are victorious in the 42-minute fight over Elder Dragon. They sustain through the 100 Thieves onslaught here. Let's take another look. They get the Elder Dragon down to 5k. Fake God then initiates with the Orn ultimate, but he only knocks up Core JJ, and then it's Smithy turns the tables. They focus down the tank. After that tank is out, it is a easy re-engage there. They heal back up a little bit. Aphromu does go in for the knockup, but there's no way they can come back in that team fight at that point. And with the Elder Dragon buff, Team Liquid will push for the victory. This is a four Elder Drake buff. Look at the turret and evaporates. Look at Amazing, he evaporates. Team Liquid on the victory march. Three men from 100 Thieves try to hold the line. Ryu will retreat, but there's nowhere left to go. He's shut down by impact. Team Liquid, it was a long game, Kobe, but they'll find a double kill, they'll find the third, they'll take down the Nexus turrets, and the valiant efforts of 100 Thieves end here. Team Liquid will retain their first place spot in the standings. But 100 Thieves make them work for it. The LCS looking closer than ever. Team Liquid, that's exactly what you expected from the late game team fighting capabilities of a team that has accomplished so much in North America. I said that would be the true test of 100 Thieves if they were able to find the edge in those late game fights. But man, I have to applaud this squad that was on such an incredible losing streak at the start of this split and just looks so much better now. Definitely. An arduous journey through this game for both teams. Team Liquid showing that the power of Sonoteric cannot be underestimated though. Cosmic Radiance so damned hard to play around. They made the team fights work out. And I think so much of it came down to that Elder Drake fight where 100 Thieves knew they had to engage. You can't risk a 50-50. If you lose that, you lose the whole game because the buff is so strong for your opponents and just not for you. And when they go in too early, exactly, clap. It's Team Liquid striking back. This is what late game League of Legends is all about, is mm -hmm. those high intensity team fights. Everyone's starting to sweat a little bit. You know the one mistake is going to be the game. The one team fight results in a destruction of a Nexus. Team Liquid were able to just bulldoze the base of 100 Thieves so easily after getting that Elder Drake too. And that's what I also like seeing from this team. They're a team that's got to the point where they know how and when they can end a game. They don't have to mess around. <laughs> you don't have to wait and regroup and shop up and all this other steps and steps and yada, yada, yada. Run it down mid, take them out. Team Liquid get the win. And for more on it, let's send things down to Pastry Time, who's standing by with a victorious bottom laner. Thank you very much. I'm here with Doublelift. That game seemed 
<laughs> stressful to play. What was it like? What's the atmosphere in the kind of the last 10, 15 minutes of that game? Uh, it was really tense because we kept losing team fights, and it was like pretty unfortunate, I guess, how. I mean, we, we almost lost. We almost lost to 100 wheelchairs. It was pretty bad. <laughs> I, I wasn't, you know, like, I, as we ended the game, I was just thinking, wow, like, that was a pretty intense late game, but uh, we're going to get yelled at pretty hard by the coaches. It did seem like you guys picked, you know, a, a competition you guys have played a lot, something very comfortable. Why was this game so much more difficult than you expected? Um, it was actually our very first time ever playing Zoe into Quirky. We just tried it on stage. Um, <laughs> Something that we do a lot for some reason, but yeah, like uh, I think we just didn't really know how to pilot our comp super well since, I mean, it is an ARAM comp, but like that's every Sona comp ever. It was, you know, with Jay Zoe with Sona, you're, you just want to ARAM and they're splitting, so it felt, it felt pretty pressured for us to engage. And whenever we did engage, Corky just joined the fight really fast with TP or package, and I think we were just like, miscalculating how long we had, because the fight would just last like 10 seconds, and then the, the, the guy that like wasn't a part of the fight from the beginning would just join. So I think we just had some, you know, issues like calculating how long we had to fight. And again, makes sense given that you are trying things on stage. In fact, as you mentioned, a lot of teams are trying a lot of different champions. Do you think that's a healthy thing for the league and even just for Team Liquid to be doing? Because it does seem like everyone's saying that we need to be picking up more champions and playing new strategies. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really good. Um, not only as like a viewer, because I bet everyone's sick of seeing the same meta matchups every single game, but uh, as a player, like, you really can tell who is able to pick up new champions um, and able to like master them, I guess, versus like somebody who's just been playing, kind of like me, like I've been playing AD carry for like eight years. Um, it, you're kind of like banking on your experience more than your ability to learn. So I, I like that people are playing new champions and it's actually working because it like pushes you to be a better player and it kind of shows like, okay, which players are just kind of skill capped versus players that are still like, you know, adding new things to their repertoire. I will definitely thank you so much for the interview. Congratulations on the win today. For more on this game, we'll send it back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you, Pastry Time. Double F wants more competition in the LCS. I'd say he got it today yeah. as that win did not come easily for TL over 100 Thieves. They do secure it, though, and it is a bounce back after their loss yesterday to Cloud9. That would have really sucked. 0-2 <laughs> start for Team Liquid, and this is the composition that European teams were telling Team Liquid. Stop doing it. Stop playing it. So they doubled down on it, and it didn't even look that good. So they, I think did they it, knew Did what, it not look that? I mean, I'm, again, the win didn't come easily, but did they look bad I, on that composition? Well, well the, the same problem to me happened where they died in bottom lane again, level okay. one, which is at least were the very minute things that bust the game wide open, that with the specific comp, if you start giving away those kills in the bottom lane with the Sona, you really fall behind. And it wasn't until the counter gank and the bots dive where Sona got three kills to get back into the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I like a lot of the things 100 Thieves did uh, with their comp to, to set up things in the late game, but here's that level one that you're talking about, like, just pushed in too far and getting too aggressive with the Sona Tarek early on, and then, like Crumbs is saying, against a top-level international team, these kinds of plays probably lose you the game if they're executing them correctly and they don't, okay. you know, get caught here with the three-man knockup and, and all the things that come to follow. With that said, I think the reason the game was so difficult in the mid to late game was because despite getting through the laning phase decently well, 100 Thieves comp is actually decent into a Sona Terra comp where you have multiple forms of engage as well as a Gragas to split people up. So you can always start with the Ornn ultimate and then they have hyper late game scaling carries with Corky and Zaya. So the damage never really falls off and so you always have to understand that 100 Thieves comp has a way to pick fights to win games. So as much as it sucks that their laning phase didn't go quite as good as it should have for 100 Thieves, it wasn't like they were 100% out of the woodwork because, hey, Sona Tarek outscaled. Right. I mean, they did the same game plan that IG did against SKT in MSI and the, one of the fastest victories ever. You just camp the bottom and you really take the most out of it. So I'm looking at Team Liquid in the lens of if they go to international competitions, if they're presenting the same opportunities that a top team exploits, that is a worrying sign. So I want to make sure that if they're going to stick to playing on the Tarek, mm -hmm. you don't give away that bottom lane and you don't put yourself in a position to be exploited. A completely fair assessment, especially in light of Team Liquid sticking to their guns. As you mentioned, they are saying to us with this draft that they want Ooh. to continue playing Sonoteric and making these kinds of compositions work. Big play here in the mid lane for TL coming out two for zero in the mid lane 19 minutes in, also snagging the turret off the back end. I think this just shows why they like this composition. Yeah. It has so much power 
when you get to that phase, when you can start to group up, and when we can actually see the synergies between Sona and Tarek come out. Because I know we've seen it so many times where Sona's and Tarek just use their abilities at random times, and it looks terrible when that happens. But when it's coordinated, it really looks pretty, where the Sona ultimate and Tarek, that actually are very similar looking abilities. Well, plus the, the comp just does everything. Straight. It disengages, it engages, it heals, it pokes with the Jace and the, the Zoe. Like, it literally does everything. And right. I understand why TL wants to play a team comp that can do everything. You know, Double is talking about how it's best at A-ramming. We're just forcing you to stay mid and eventually outpoking and out-sustaining you. Mm -hmm. Great, but 100 Thieves play well. And so they were not able to just fall prey to this, as well as the fact that, you know, Light Crumbs has been calling for TL. Clean up their mis-executions. Core JJ gets popped there without being able to drop his ultimate. And then instead of, you know, backing up and completely giving 100 Thieves the uh, respect they deserve, they keep getting flashes blown. And eventually, Ryu's going to be able to find a wraparound flank. Or excuse me, uh, Cody Sut. Not Cody Sut. <laughs> uh, Bang finds a wraparound flank kill onto uh, Doublelift, which sets up that first Baron attempt. And then here, the Doublelift impact Here's getting caught out in the mid lane. Yeah, there with a TP flank around the back. Uh, this is where I return to something that you've been pretty vocal about, Crumbs, uh, which is that for North America on the international stage, or for our top teams at least, a lot of times on the international stage, there are simple mechanical failures or individual failures uh, within the team that can sometimes spell disaster and a loss outright. That is an example to me of something that on the international stage would result in a Team Liquid loss, where here, it did not. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm a personal, from experience, expert in losing games <laughs> from myself. So when I see it, I think I can call it. I think I can say that looks like a game losing individual mistake. And so those things need to be shored up. And we want to see these teams lose as a team and say, when you go into the VOD review, why did we lose? You have to start asking your questions and really be confused as to why you lost. And that then leads to, oh, we lost because as a team, we might have gone for the wrong thing. Or as a team, we didn't have the right synergy between our champions as opposed to, oh, one guy was out of position because he didn't read the map well. And I mean, to be fair, the reason that they won was because they got so many drakes in the early game. So when they started forcing those barons and making 100 thieves come to them, you heard Double of talking a lot about in the interview thinking they had more time, or they mm -hmm. thought they had more time than they really did. It would have been even worse if they didn't have the mountain drake to put more pressure on making 100 thieves collapse. So this was a game that could have easily gotten away from TL, and 100 Thieves put up a really good fight. And as Kobe mentioned, the fact that it was 100 Thieves of all teams to challenge TL to this degree kind of speaks to, to some degree, uh, the, the remaining teams in the LCS really making efforts towards, uh, you know, br breaking the LCS meta, as Doubles was talking about. It's great to see teams reaching for things and saying, okay, instead of banning out the Sonoteric that we know TL loves to play, Let's try and find the answers to it in a similar fashion to the way the European teams did. We don't have to use the same champions, but let's find our response. They they read it, right? They knew a, they had a game plan and they executed well. Camp bottom, try to snowball, get your cork into the late game, use the Orn to hit those item power spikes, and then win team fights through hard engage. So 100 Thieves definitely knew what they had to do. They had those little mishaps and mechanics, but I'm really hopeful for them, which is why I put them as, like, I think it was six in the power ranking. All right, TL squeaks by with a 1-1 record this weekend. Game four, though, has CLG versus TSM. And if you're tempted to see how this battle for first will play out click by click, check out riot.com slash proview, which will give you the player POVs and a ton of stats heading into that clash. See if CLG can break the loss streak after this. Double now trying to get Jets back in. beneath the tier one turret. Aphromu taken very low, and it's a double kill for Double Lift. There's the crescendo, there's the sleepy trouble, and there's the triple for Double. Looking AD, looking AD. Okay. Looking AD. I'm tipping, I'm tipping this, I'm tipping this. AD then, no, yeah. keep it, look at me with it. Yeah, we take it, cork it, cork it, back line, back line, back line, double in Zoe, let me Zoe, Zoe, no push, Zoe, no push, Zoe, no push. Zoe, 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 Chase, 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 chase. Nice, nice, chase, 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 chase. Nice denial coming out from Double Lift, freezing Afro Moon in his tracks, but now Double Lift is cut down. Right, right, right. Chase, 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 I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. W and two. W and one. W, 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 W. Jensen goes on a killing spree, and TL is still looking pretty good. Afro Moon in the middle of multiple people. He's going to be taken down by Impact. Team Liquid are slamming 100 Thieves into the ground.